Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Uh, we continue here on Bickley and Murata Mornings, the Monday edition. Bick, Sarah, back. Jay Feely in studio with us uh, this football season. Jay will be in the booth for CBS along with uh, Tom yeah. McCarthy and James Lofton. He did a little radio work this weekend. Just the second kicker to achieve that lofty That's right. status, Me and man. Pat Summerall. It'll be fun. Week, week one, I'm at Denver. Denver against the Raiders. And my son, who's playing for Colorado now, We'll be playing in Boulder the day before nice. against Nebraska. So we get to do a double dip. I can run up there Saturday, That's watch fantastic. him play, and then call my game Sunday. You wow. and Summerall. That's, <laughs> That's kind of crazy. That's quite That's There's good company. Jay Feely, John. <laughs> yeah, he Dale, was early on. He was, a, he was an analyst, and yes. then he obviously became a play by, legendary play-by-play guy. Yeah. So. You have play by play in your sites? I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun because you know play by play you get to do all the different sports. Like yes. I envy Jim Nance getting to go to all the sports that I love, and Jim's one of my favorite guys in the world. It's been great to me. But you know to be able to do football and then jump in and do golf and then do the Final Four. I mean that, that's just that's a sports a guy who loves sports like me. That's yes. a dream. <laughs> and then to be able like Jim Nance just to say at some point, you know what? I've had enough of the Final Four. I'm stepping aside <laughs> yeah, for the Final right. Four. Yeah, I'll just right. keep doing I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just going to focus on <laughs> golf. We yeah. talked Cardinals with Jay. I uh, want to talk a little college with you, too, with this huge ASU story yeah. that's going down. Um, obviously, from the reaction Kenny Dillingham had yesterday and, and, and having to deliver that message of a postseason ban to his team, regardless of how ASU was going to do this year, the timing of it is – is icky to use to use a big that's being no, nice yeah to yeah. use a, a, a big word i think it's bs it is yes. BS. I, I really just being transparent because you did it purposefully on game week game week so you you wouldn't have guys transfer that's the only reason you waited you know because you wanted to get far enough along in the off season here leading into the season that now these seniors and the guys that were there because the guys who transferred in they can't transfer again no you know once you've transferred once you can do that for free your second transfer you got to sit out a year yeah. so it's really you're penalizing the players that were there that yes. stayed at your school that were loyal to the school and stayed there you know if i'm conyers or clark like i'm pissed off yeah because now it's really too late for me to transfer into another team and feel like i can step in and start right there and that's why you waited yeah. until right now which and, is not fair to those players at and all. what could have changed between the closing of the portal and nothing now? changed nothing changed all you did was was penalize your guys yep. you knew all the way back to when it happened what you did you knew what was going to happen and, and i can't listen to herm edwards on tv now. i'm with you and, and and look at him the same because I, I've seen it. I had all the players over my house so many times from that ASU team because my son was playing there. And, you know, I would ask them, like, and, and they would be like, no, I never talked to Herm. Like, he doesn't talk to any of us. Like, we have no relationship with him. It was, it was a disappointment watching him as a coach of a college team because I really – I was an advocate on this, on this radio show, you know, like yeah. – I thought it was a great hire, and it, and it certainly wasn't. Yeah, and and we talk now with your son at Colorado, um, going through the Deion Sanders um, immersive experience. You're telling me that couldn't be going any better. Well, we'll see if they win games. Well, there's <laughs> that. There is that. But, but what Deion's done is he's created a great culture of accountability there, and which and Herm didn't do that. Herm no. was not about accountability, and and he holds everybody accountable. Dion does. Which you look at Dion prime time, and you don't think he's going to be a disciplinarian. And, and he is. He wants everyone in the same shoes, same socks, shorts. He wants everyone doing the same thing. If you're not on time, he's gonna he's gonna penalize you, and you're gonna run, and or you're gonna miss a practice, and and so that's what you want, you know. And that's something that my son Jace craved and didn't have here at ASU, and he's happy to have that there at Colorado. Yeah, there are similarities between what's going on at Colorado, Dion, obviously, with the massive turnover of that roster. They have Kenny, ten guys left on their team. That, that's amazing. From last ten year. guys? Ten. Oh, oh, I mean, oh, that's, un that's, that's un unheard, unheard of. of. To a lesser degree, Kenny Dillingham did that in his first year. He brought in 40-some-odd transfers from outside the program. So, uh, you know, a, a, a little less of a turnover. But, it, you know, this news – this challenge, it was going to be a challenging year for Kenny Dillingham anyway. What, what do you think this does for, for his task as a head coach to kind of motivate these kids? I liked his answer. 
you know, he was put in a bad situation, and it wasn't his doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a previous regime, and and he's got to he's got to do the best he can with what he's got right now. And that means, like you said earlier on the show, as I was driving in listening to you, like create this us against the world mentality, and let's go out there and let's prove that we were good enough to get into a bowl game. You know, and so he's got to like galvanize the troops, and if he wants to use Ray Anderson or anybody else as the bad guys and point them and be like, hey, they don't care about us, they don't, you know. It's just us against the world. That's what he's got to try and create. And it's similar in a way, I think, to the Cardinals right now. Like, these two programs are going to be similar this year and that it's not going to be about wins and losses as much as about creating the right culture and and trying to get guys bought into what what their belief is. And, you know, he's got a freshman quarterback that he's going to start. So, you know, now they can kind of do it without worrying about – if we are winning games or not. Obviously, you want to try and go out there and win that games. That is true. But you're it, trying yeah. to create this culture and develop this kid at quarterback and just build for the future, and, and now he has the freedom, really, to do that. That's true. It's sort of a martyr-like feel to yeah. that based on that decision. Yeah, That's definitely. true. It's a good point. I'd love to get your thoughts, Jay, too, as a guy you know played at Michigan, Big Ten, all the changes with these, with these conferences. It, it's a bittersweet feeling. This is the last year of the Pac-12 as we know it. You got – Western schools joining the Big Ten. I mean, what is your thought on all this and where it's going? Well, the NCAA, you know, buried their head in the sand for so long, they created this mess. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I said forever, if you created a system where you allowed players to make money on their name, image, likeness, and put it into a deferred compensation plan where they got that money after they were done playing, that mm-hmm. was the best model. You know, because now you've created a situation on teams where you have the haves and the have-nots in a college locker room, Mm -hmm. you know, with 18 to 22-year-olds, you know, that aren't mature enough to handle it like an NFL locker room, a professional locker room. And when you have some guys making millions of dollars, legitimately millions millions of dollars, dollars, and other guys not making any money at all, that's tough for 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds to handle, you know? And then they're stupid with their money. And and you don't have the situation in place where – they can have advisors helping them make the right decisions. NFL players are stupid with their money. NBA players are stupid with their money, much less 18 and 19-year-olds. So I blame the NCAA, first of all. I think the end result is probably four super conferences, you know, and that's what you'll have. And, and then, you know, those super conferences will lead into, you know, the playoff that we have now. With I, I was told by a big-time booster who knows this stuff that Arch Manning has been offered $10 million and there's a quarterback who's been offered $13 million. Now, he wouldn't tell me who that other quarterback is, and I'm not fully immersed in the college game to know who that might be. Jaden Rashada had $13 million on the books Florida. at Florida. That's right. Oh, that's right. Until they backed out. sketchy NIL deal. That was, <laughs> that was that's right. concocted by that's some right. sophomore on campus. That's but right. still, it was, it yeah. was almost $14 wow. million. Dollars. Well, I know a kicker of a Colorado if anybody wants to get NIL money, too. <laughs> <laughs> I just, what I can't wait with all this shifting, Jay, is like the first time USC's got to go on the road to like West Lafayette late in the season and play like a 9 a.m. Pacific time kickoff. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Is if, if USC suffers in all of this, that's basically what I'm rooting for. Well, I think USC is going to be in the hunt for the national championship this year. Do you? I do, yeah. They lost a lot. Caleb's back, though. They have a ton of talent. I don't know if you watched that San Jose Some State it, game. Yeah, but they got a ton oh, yeah. of talent oh, yeah. on the oh, yeah. offensive side of the ball. They're going to they light it the, up. If, and they brought in a lot of transfers defensively. If they can fix the problems that they had last year defensively, look out. Jay, yep. thanks so much for coming in, fun, man. man. Good to talk to you. Yeah, now I get to go play some golf. Enjoy your you tea time, come? brother. <laughs> it's a great-looking shirt. I appreciate he, it. He does want to go. That is a great hour. Hour. He's got to work. I get to work. <laughs> See you guys. Jarrett just complimented you on your no, shirt. I said that. You worried? Jarrett, I like the Birkenstocks that you have on in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, when I listen to Jarrett on the air, I picture him wearing yes. Birkenstocks. Yes. He always has them on. <laughs> I thought those were Chewbacca slippers. October, at least. <laughs> Chewbacca slippers. Uh, again, you can uh, catch Jay Feely on CBS this fall, working with Tom McCarthy and James Lofton. Jay, good to talk to you, man. Thanks for coming See in. See you guys.